Worldwide, more people are suffering from iron deficiency than any other deficiency. In developed countries, up to 40% of the female population is severely iron deficient. In Western countries, the population that is at highest risk for iron deficiency are fellow vegans. In a 2021 study, up to 8% of the participants were shown to be iron deficient. So while studies on vegetarians and vegans always highlight that veganism and vegetarianism is beneficial for health conditions such as heart disease, cancer and type 2 diabetes, it is clearly obvious that iron is an essential nutrient that requires special attention. Even studies that show that vegetarians and vegans are not at a higher risk of iron deficiency than meat eaters always highlight that they talk about vegetarians eating a well-balanced diet. So while some of us do eat a well-balanced diet, a good portion of us are camping in the french fries and Oreo zip code. In this video, you will discover whether or not you're in the high-risk population of vegans that might suffer from iron deficiency. And hint, this is not just the campers in the french fries and Oreo zip code. You will also discover the top 7 healthy, non-fortified, iron-rich foods that make it so easy to hit your daily targets in almost feels like cheating. For those that are new here, hi, I'm Florian, award-winning person trainer and vegan since 8 years, so let's just dive right in. To understand why vegans are typically at a higher risk of iron deficiency, we have to look at what differentiates the iron found in animal versus plant foods. Animal foods contain heme iron, while plant foods only contain non-heme iron. To keep things simple, what differentiates these two forms is your body's ability to absorb them. Because heme iron is similar to the, to the iron in our body, our bodies absorb them up to six times better. Imagine a factory here that produces hummus. If a truckload of hummus arrives, you will quickly get more hummus in the factory. But if a truckload of chickpeas arrive and you gotta blend them together, add oil and spices, chances are high that unless your workers are super motivated, there will not be any more hummus anytime soon. Our body is obviously the hummus factory, and the hummus that arrives is the heme iron, and the chickpeas that arrive is the non-heme iron. A big factor that influences the iron absorption is how much hummus is currently in the factory. If the body has a lot of iron, it will absorb less iron. If the body has little iron, it will absorb more. Imagine this again in the hummus factory. If you cannot fulfill your orders to your customers, and you have no hummus left, if suddenly a truckload of chickpeas arrive, you're gonna treat this truckload of chickpeas like a gift from God. But if you have more than enough hummus in your factory to fulfill customer orders for years, you're probably not gonna be interested in turning chickpeas into hummus because ain't nobody got time for that. Another factor here important to mention that influences iron absorption is phytate. Phytate is the one component known to strongly reduce iron absorption. Phytate is found in grains, seeds, legumes and cereals, which are unfortunately often the foods that are highest in iron. In this context, you can imagine phytate as this crazy, chickpea-loving truck driver that once the chickpeas arrive, steps out with a gun and prevents the workers from getting to the chickpeas. So yes, technically a lot of chickpeas arrive, but because there's this crazy truck driver, the workers can't get to the damn chickpeas. So while phytate is the crazy truck driver that prevents the iron absorption, right, or the chickpea unloading, vitamin C is the overly nice truck driver that helps your workers unload the chickpeas from the carriage. Vitamin C is the most significant enhancer of iron absorption. Vitamin C taken with a meal can increase absorption of iron up to sixfold. But vitamin C aside, iron in plant foods is generally on average less likely to be absorbed as efficient as iron found in animal foods. And as such, vegans with non-plant diets are more likely to be deficient in iron. So should we all just immediately worry about iron? Hold on a second. Let's first see if you're in the high-risk population of vegans. Typically, the highest risk population of vegans are number one, women. Because women lose a significant amount of blood in times of menstruation. This makes it worse if women are obese. Second risk factor, or women being a risk factor is a bit weird, but you know, it is, it is what it is. The reason obesity is a problem because obesity typically reduces the body's ability to absorb iron properly. And the third risk factor 
is women obese that are not on contraceptives. The reason this is a problem because typically contraceptives, so the pill, reduces the amount of blood your body loses during menstruation, sometimes by up to 50%. So you're at risk of iron deficiency if you're an obese, vegan woman that is not on contraceptives, or you're experiencing above average blood loss. In fact, some researchers go as far and mention that menstrual blood loss is the absolute only thing that matters for iron deficiency, not whether you're vegan or not. So if you're part of this high risk population, then it's worth to pay special attention to iron in your nutrition and also regularly check your iron levels with a doctor. So let's talk about the seven healthy, non-fortified, vegan, iron rich foods that make it so easy to hit your daily target that it almost feels like cheating. The best vegan iron sources that are super easy to implement are the following. Number one, amaranth. One cup of cooked amaranth contains 5.2 milligrams of non-heme iron. If you eat two cups of cooked amaranth per day, you almost got your required daily intake of iron, which is between 10 to 50 milligrams per day. Number two, lentils, dried peas or beans. They contain 3.8 milligrams per cup. If you eat one cup of amaranth and one cup of kidney beans per dinner, you almost very closely got your required daily intake of iron. Number three, tofu. Half a cup of tofu contains 2.9 milligrams. Number four, quinoa. One cup of cooked quinoa contains 2.8 milligrams. Five, nutritional yeast. While they write fortified here, this is technically not fortified. So five grams of nutritional yeast contains 1.8 milligrams of non-heme iron. Six, raw oats. One cup of raw oats contain 1.3 milligrams. And number seven, almonds. 20 to 25 pieces of almonds contain 1.1 milligram. So in regards to iron rich meals, here's what you would do to get enough iron on a vegan diet. You have one cup of raw oats per breakfast and you combine this with one to two cups of soy milk. You have 20 to 25 almonds later on as a snack. For lunch, you have one cup of quinoa with half a cup of tofu. And for dinner, you have one cup of amaranth with a cup of cooked kidney beans. This gives you a total non-heme iron intake of, wait for it, 16.1 milligram per day, which is all the iron you need. Now that we covered health, the next thing you might be interested in is performance. Getting in your best shape on a vegan diet and being all that you can be. The best next step to get in shape is to download an absolutely free copy of the Fit Vegan Secrets ebook. It allows you to make the connection with your health and fitness similar as you did with veganism. Remember that one moment when you watched a documentary or maybe you read a book and it helped you make the connection which changed your behavior long term for the better. That's what this book is aiming to create. The book has 109 pages and it's engineered to be read and mastered in a short afternoon. You can download the book for absolutely free if you head over to fitvegans.com secrets. So thank you for watching this video and I see you next time.